morning all so in today's class we will study about the proof of gauss law so last class we understood what is gauss law because we studied that the total flux will be equal to the total charge enclosed right so how to prove it mathematically also because that can also come for your exam so we will see that and then we will see the application of gauss law so like how we calculate the electric field intensity by using gauss law uh, in a point charge uh, sorry uh, surface charge volume charge and like that okay we will see so first of all coming to the proof of gauss law you know, you know that uh, gauss law means total flux involved is equal to the total charge and gross that's what you call uh, gauss law so we will consider a point charge q located in a homogeneous medium whose dielectric constant is epsilon the electric field at any point at a distance r from the charge q is to be calculated so we need to calculate the electric field due to the charge q at a distance r so you know the formula electric field intensity is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 or epsilon into q by r squared into ar so a is the radius vector and that shows the direction of the electric field so electric flux density you know it is d is equal to epsilon into e so that d is equal to so epsilon epsilon will cancel so d is equal to q by 4 pi r squared into ar so in last class we saw one equation that is d phi is equal to e dot ds that is flux uh, the, the equation involving flux electric field intensity and the surface area so we can uh, substitute electric field intensity as 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q by r square into ds and integral phi that is uh, the electric flux will be equal to integral uh, d phi is equal to integral over s d phi is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q by r square into integral over ds that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q by r square into 4 pi r square because that is the area so 4 pi 4 pi will get cancel r square r square which gets cancel and we get it as flux is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times the total charge so you know the equation d is equal to epsilon e so epsilon epsilon you can cancel and the total flux will be equal to q enclosed that is the total charge enclosed because uh, this thing you already seen in the last class what the explanation is so i am not going uh, deep into it so i just want to share with you how to prove that because it's very simple but uh, if you are not remembering means it will not be you will not be able to do it so, so i just want to mention that in the class so this is the proof of gauss law okay now we will move on to the applications of gauss law for using gauss law to calculate the electric field we must know if the charge distribution is symmetrical or not because gauss law can be applied only if the charge distribution is symmetrical so you must know whether the charge distribution is symmetrical or not for a symmetrical charge distribution we construct a gaussian surface which is mathematically a closed surface so we need a gaussian surface the surface is chosen such that the electric flux density d is normal or tangential to the gaussian surface because in other case then when we take the dot product it will become zero so in order to avoid that uh, the electric flux density d is normal or it should be uh, tangential to the gaussian surface so this is how we choose a gaussian surface a gaussian surface has certain properties okay so let's see uh, how we use gauss law to find the electric field intensity due to a point charge consider a point charge q is located at the origin to determine the electric field intensity at a point p so there is a point charge q that is located at the origin and we need a electric field intensity at a point e that's it so we choose a spherical surface because we need to choose a gaussian surface right so a gaussian surface has certain properties so we need to choose a spherical surface which is a gaussian surface for uh, moving on to the uh, derivation of point charge let me tell you what uh, let me tell you uh, something about gaussian surface so in order for a surface to be a gaussian surface the surface must contain the point at which the field intensity is to be found for example uh, if q is a charge and we need to find the electric field intensity at p then the then the gaussian surface will be such that it contains the point p the point p is inside the surface 
as well as i told you the flux density is normal as well as constant over some parts of the surface that is the tangential that means i, I told you like the eclectic flux density is normal or tangential to the gauss surface so these are the specialties of gaussian surface so we choose a spherical surface containing p which will be satisfying the symmetric condition so you already know the equation pi is equal to surface integral d dot ds so dr means it is showing the direction it is showing the direction so dr is equal to closed integral s ds is equal to dr into 4 pi r square area so see this is the gaussian surface x y z and this is the gaussian surface and this shows the direction so d is equal to q by a the charge per unit area so q by 4 pi r square into a r and electric field is equal to d by epsilon so what is electric field so by using gauss law what is the electric field 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q by r square volt per meter it is very important uh, these things can come for a university exam as well as if you are writing any competitive exam also they can ask you these questions like what is the electric field intensity uh, for a gaussian surface for which the point at, at a distance of r such, such things you can they can ask so it is 1 by so, so this is a, this is how we prove that 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q by r square so that's the case of a point charge now a line charge so you know what is a point charge what is a line charge so now coming to line charge applying gauss law so you have x y z plane and the uh, line charge rho l coulomb per meter uh, uh, line uh, charge density is there and it is lying along the z axis and the total length is l so we consider a gaussian surface here at a distance of rho So consider an infinite line of uniform charge rho l coulomb per meter which is lying along the z axis, and we need to determine the electric flux density, sorry, field density at point P. So you know d is equal to d rho into a rho. So uh, a rho means it shows the direction because it is a cylindrical surface. So a rho will be the direction. So flux is equal to q by Gauss law. So integral d dot ds is equal to integral d d rho into integral ds is equal to d rho into two pi rho l. Two pi rho l is the surface area. Surface area of cylinder. So then we equate rho l is equal to two pi rho l. So rho l and l and l cancel. Then rho l is equal to two pi rho into d rho. Right. So rho l into l is q. This is q only. You should understand that because you know rho l is equal to q by l. Okay. So q is equal to rho l is equal to d rho into two pi rho. So d rho is equal to rho l by two pi rho. Therefore, d is equal to rho l by two pi rho into a rho. So electric field e is equal to d by f alone. So d, what is d? What is e? Everything you know. So I need not say the name every time. So Electric field e is equal to rho l by two pi epsilon in the rho a rho. So this is the case of a uh, line charge. The first one was a point charge, line charge. And now we have infinite sheet of charge. So finally, we are at infinite sheet sheet of charge. So similarly, you consider an uh, x y z, and there is an infinite sheet of charge, uh, which is of a, a surface charge density rho s coulomb per meter square. And is lying on the e z is equal to zero plane. So this e z is equal to zero plane, x y plane. All these things should be clear for you because we have seen all these things in our first classes. That is the module one was the basics for all these things. So we have seen everything there. So we consider an infinite sheet of charge rho s coulomb per meter square. It is lying on e z is equal to zero plane. So we need to determine d at a point P, which is a rectangular box, which is cut symmetrically by the infinite sheet of charge. As the electric flux density is normal to the infinite sheet of charge, d is equal to d e z into a e z. So the direction of electric flux density is along the e z axis, and you know by Gauss law, uh, the flux uh, total flux is equal to the total flux passing through will be equal to the total charge enclosed. So that is equal to rho s into closed integral d s because you know rho s is equal to q by d s. That is equal to integral d dot d s from Gauss Gauss law. You know already know that. So q is equal to the same definition. It will it will be going the same way. So q is equal to integral over s d dot d s is equal to d s into so upper part and lower part because this is a sheet of charge. So you should consider the top and bottom. 
because this is the Gaussian surface. So you know what are the properties of a Gaussian surface? I already told you. Okay, so rho s into a is equal to d z into a plus a because uh, area two times it will come. So rho s into a is equal to d z into two a. Therefore, d z is equal to rho s by two. That is along the z direction. So d is equal to uh, uh, the vector d is equal to rho s. Rho s is the surface charge density divided by two into a z. So you know the electric field is equal to d by epsilon. So finally, you get it like e is equal to d by epsilon into rho s by two f two rho s by two epsilon into a z. That is along the z direction. So I will just repeat once again. So we have seen the what is the uh, how to prove Gauss law in this particular session. We have seen how to prove Gauss law. The so simple uh, derivation you have. And then we see the application of Gauss law. Before that, you should understand what is a Gaussian surface. What are the properties? So the electric flux density should be uh, normal or tangential. Then the point should be inside the, the surface that we consider should contain the point. Then such things. This is the criteria. So for for a point charge, how it will be? Then for an infinite sheet of charge, how it will be? So you can see that for all the Gaussian surface that we are considering, the point should contain the Gaussian surface. Okay, the, the point should be inside the Gaussian surface. So that is one property. So infinite sheet of charge, and then this is for a so that is for a line, point charge, line charge, and third one is for infinite sheet of charge. So these three derivations are very very important. Now let's see the homework question which I gave you. So uh, from the last class, you have the total electric flux leaving the spherical surface. Of, so the radius of the spherical surface is 2.5 meter. And the first one we did, and the second case was we need to find the, uh, we, we have a line charge, rho L, uh, that is one by x square plus one Newton uh, Coulomb per meter. So we need to find the electric flux because of this line charge. So this is actually in the spherical coordinate, right? Cylindrical coordinate. So how we will do? So let's see. Uh, this is a line charge. Let's see. So we will draw the figure. Figure will be like this. Here you have, and this is the origin, and the line charge will be like this. Will be the line charge, and you know that the radius is two point five and. This is also 2.5. So this point will be actually minus 2.5. And this point will be actually plus 2.5. And they, are, they also say that this is the Z axis. The line charge is lying along the Z axis, right? So you know that for a line, for line charge density, rho L is equal to dQ by dL. Therefore, dQ is equal to rho L into so dl so but this is along the z axis so it will be d z only d z so one by z square plus one given in the question into d z and q is equal to integral d q is equal to integral so the limit that's why i marked here limit is from minus 2.5 to 2.5 1 by z square plus one d z so integral one by x square plus one, you should know it is tan inverse x. So tan inverse is that you have studied in your mathematics. So in your lower classes also you are studying. So the man inverse is that 2.5. So the final answer will be 2.381 nanocoulomb. So everybody be familiar and be friendly with your calculator. Then only you can do all these problems. So I hope so this problem is clear for you. Thank you.